Hello and welcome to my Minecraft sketchbook. This episode we're going to be looking at all this stuff over here. What on earth? What on earth is all this? All this stuff over here. Um, right, let's, let's fly down. Let's fly down and take a look and I'll explain it all. And it's kind of it's kind of connected to there's something over there as well. It's kind of connected to that and all this kind of weird mess over here too. So this is my wetlands map. I'm creating uh, for a museum uh, a Minecraft wetlands map, and I've created a iPad version of the game that schools can come in and they can play the game. And uh, as they play the game, they go around a wetlands environment uh, and they can see all the different kinds of environments that there are. And then they have to go and make their own environments. And then they, with each other, they peer review each other's efforts and they score each other on whether these birds would like uh, their kind of wetlands or not. So you have to look at kind of real wetlands environments and recreate those things within Minecraft. Now what I wanted to do, I want to create a PC version of this that automates that. You don't, you can even play on your own. Uh, so I want to create a downloadable map and I'm going to be creating it within the new 1.8 Minecraft. So we've got all these new command blocks and stuff like that that's going to uh, assist us. Uh, so uh, what I'm going to show you in this video is some of the different ideas that I came up with uh, for testing this, these kind of environments. How do I test whether a block has water in it? Or, or block doesn't have water in it and that was the challenge I set myself so basically this is a map where you can go around any environment at all make changes create a wetland environment wherever on a normal Minecraft map and as long as we've got our system running you can then uh, test that environment and find out um, how uh, you know what kind of wildlife would spawn there now the first thing I thought I could do is I could test for the blocks uh, and so that's why I set this array up. So basically, I set this array up, and we had, I had lots of um, minecart command blocks because minecart command blocks will kind of tick over. And we were gonna, I was gonna either place them all together, but they all jiggled about, and that was kind of crazy. So I think, uh, and then I thought, well, maybe we'll just have to uh, separate them like this. So that's what this one's about. If we can, we'll go underneath here. You can kind of see, I've got it ready. And I thought, well, we'll just do an average score. I mean, okay, so it'll do an average score. Maybe I'll just do a three by three plot, because that's kind of, you know, it's it's nice and neat. And I'll create some scoreboards. So I'll create a kind of a saturation scoreboard, because this is what the kind of birds, the birds like for their habitats. They like water. Uh, they like tall, well, tall grass, but anything above ground really that could provide cover. So this isn't just uh, this. This would test for not air. <laughs> okay, so anything above ground, uh, it, would, it would give cover. So that's about visibility, what the kind of different birds would like visibility. The next one is kind of sand and shingle. So that's this is sand and shingle. And then the next one is... Who's that guy over there? The next one is mud, and I had to use podzil. Uh, because real Minecraft mud, as you know, looks like this. Break a bit, pop a bit of mud in. And the trouble with this is, over time, the grass would grow onto the mud. And, you know, then would have grass and it wouldn't be mud. So uh, I had to, I thought, I need to differentiate between the grass and between mud. So these are my four different types of uh, objectives. And depending on the score that each one will receive, a wetlands bird will be cloned in, a model of it at least, will be cloned into that area uh, so you can actually see what kind of birds would like this kind of environment to live in. So all that ended up with these kind of me try experimenting with this kind of with the redstone, I thought maybe I could clone it all in and stuff like that. And uh, you know, so this is me. So that's me thinking well, maybe it'll just be like that, but smaller. Then I thought maybe I could just spawn um, redstone underneath something like this. So this is an array uh, that will test, um, t t you know, test all those blocks and a middle block, and you'd have a redstone that would spawn red on top of the redstone. So it would kind of sit on top. Uh, the redstone would spawn in first, and then this would spawn in the top, and it would uh, it would work, and it would test everything once, which would be quite good. Uh, and I'll have to kind of clone that in. And then along came uh, the new snapshot, uh, snapshot 14w08a, which is what I'm actually using now. And maybe it was the one before that, but anyway, what we had is we had something called test for blocks, which is this command here. 
which is astonishing. Test for Blocks does comparisons. So basically, Test for Blocks will compare this area down here with this area up here and it also it can mask it off so even though I've got air here and these floating blocks of water were produced via MC edit so I've got MC edit kind of doing that and that's kind of okay as far as I'm concerned we, we only want to test for water so anything else can be in there at all it could be uh, sand all sorts of stuff it doesn't matter it's just testing for the water okay so in this command we, we've got here we've got uh, the X the Y and the Z in one area, the X and the Y and the Z in the other area. That is kind of, I think it's kind of down there and over there. Uh, and then we go where it's testing to, this area up here. And then finally on this command, it's got masked. Let's just put myself in there, masked. Now all that means is it will ignore the air here. So it's only going to only going to kind of test for these two blocks. So uh, and so if I press the button on top of this, ding we can see that it lights up so it gives a positive output fantastic and that positive output eventually will be turned into a score so I'll have a, have a command block there and that'll be a, our scoreboard that will generate a score saying 2 with saturation so what we need now is a way of cloning that contraption to where the player is standing so I've got in my hand at the moment a blank spawn egg I've got a clock running and this clock is going into here and it says it's testing for uh, score use item minimum one so I've set up uh, a scoreboard which is uh, uh, the trigger scoreboard which is this one so I'm using an item and it's stat use item spawn egg uh, and the, the friendly thing is trigger so we can see on the right hand side it's called trigger so let's move away somewhere uh, and up a bit so as you can see every time I use that egg that blank spawn egg I clone in this this object and um, and you can see I've been cloning away quite happily and actually I thought to myself what a great building tool as well and this is amazing I was amazed and I was just having a ball and <laughs> basically this is what this is doing there's this these blocks here okay and this is what this is doing so it's executing execute at P with a score of use item minimum one relative to you but so it's two down that's the Y so look for this clone this thing over here and paste it within that within the use item area so if I've done this it's going be completely below me which is kind of fantastic and that's what I wanted to happen so that's connected to this so basically when you uh, when you're going around the world and you've created your wetlands area you can right click and all this will spawn underneath you secretly invisibly okay and you see these things can be somewhere else completely we can actually hide them in a secret base uh, at the spawn because this will always look for these particular coordinates and look at this this shape so this can be a kind of a, a spawn center or kind of you know somewhere where we, we, it's hidden away from the player and the player can be out anywhere in the world doing these tests and testing their their water content their saturation their visibility their sand or their mud scores and that, that will generate that so um thank you for very much for watching this episode it's very much still in early stages and that's why i'm releasing this video within the minecraft sketchbook it's kind of my sketchbook it's kind of my ideas some of my thinking uh, that i'd like to share with you and, and eventually i will be releasing this map probably when 1.8 is released finally as well the next couple of episodes, I've got a couple more things to show you in here as well. I've got some really interesting stuff. And also we'll be going back uh, to the random dungeon generator as well. Um, there's a lot more work to do there and there's really exciting things that I've been doing with the clone command. It is just such an amazing kind of uh, contraption. And also there's particles and all sorts of other bits and pieces I want to show you too. So until next time, thanks very much for watching. If you like this video, give us a like and subscribe as well. That re really helps the channel. Until next time, bye-bye!